In this video, I'll be showing you how to organize and manage your projects inside of Workflowy. So what we've got here is the layout for an ice cream company. You can see that everything for that company is nested under this main bullet right here, Ice Cream Co. And the first thing I want to do is actually share this with the team so they can have access to all this data. I'll go to the bullet menu for this item right here, and then I'll click on share, which will bring up this little window. So here I can invite specific people. I'm just going to invite some team members here and you can choose what permissions to give them. So since these are team members and they're all going to be able to edit, I want them to have full access to this. So I'll just invite just a couple of people on the team here. All right, and that's how you do that. If you ever need to change the permissions, you would just edit these here or you can remove the team member entirely if you want to do that as well. So once you've shared this item, um, basically everyone just receives an email. They can uh, click through the email to create their workflow account, and then they'll have access to this item right here, Ice Cream Co., within their workflow document. Next, I want to show you how we can manage projects. So let's zoom into that section here. We've got three different projects we're working on. Two of these are active. We're going to develop a new ice cream flavor, and we're also remodeling our existing store. You'll also notice that I have some tags below each one of these items. You can add tags or any kind of a note below a bullet by simply clicking on that bullet, like I've done right here, and then hitting Shift return or shift enter, you'll notice the cursor moves down and you can start to write a note and you'll notice that it's also in a light gray text. I'll go ahead and remove this one here, but you can add links, tags, or text and you can add many lines. It doesn't have to be just one line. I'm going to go ahead and actually zoom into one of these projects. So we'll check this first one out, which is develop a new ice cream flavor. So this is a very basic layout you can use. You can either organize your projects as a list or as a board or a combination. So you can have boards within lists or lists within boards any way you like. So what I did here was I added some tags of the team members for this project uh, to this bullet here. And that allows me to very quickly filter through the different items. So as you can see, I've got some columns here. Uh, I've got an ideas column where we're coming up with new uh, flavors. I've got a lab section where we test recipes out and then we do trials with customers, then marketing and finally sales. So this is kind of a, a very basic layout to give you an idea of what you can do uh, to manage processes within um, your project. So what we've got here for each one of these cards, we've got a different flavor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and expand one, and you can see that each one also has a team member assigned. We've got a log bullet within each one. This is just an easy way for us to track all the different uh, activities that are ongoing for that particular idea, uh, or that particular flavor in this case. You'll also notice that we have these date tags right here. So this one has uh, July the 16th. So the way that you'd create those date tags is just by uh, creating a new line. So I'll do that right now. And then you can either use natural language, something like today, you'll get this little widget, and then you can hit tab to quickly create that date tag, or you can start to type a date. So for example, let's say uh, July the 23rd, and there we go. It'll kind of guess uh, as, as best it can to figure out what date you're trying to input. And you can hit tab, or you can continue editing and being specific so you can get like maybe a different day or different uh, year. So once you have some date tags, what you can do is you can filter your items. So for example, I can do something like, uh, let's search for July 9, mm, actually July 7 through the 9th. And so we can see all the items that have been tagged with those dates. So we've got these items right here in the logs so for, this, for spicy coconut, which is a new flavor we're developing. Um, so we can see the different things that happened during that day. We could also do uh, natural language searches, for example, today, tomorrow, all these we can basically use to search for items that have been tagged with dates. Now, getting back to the regular tags, as you can see, we've got the team members here. We can also see what items have been assigned to each team member. So if I click on one of these right here, or, or either on the items as well, we'll filter all the items and we can see any items that have been tagged. So for example, under the ideas column, we've got uh, pumpkin bread. Nina is um, in charge of that project and she's got some items here in the log. Um, so we can basically very quickly filter items if we created like a little section here with the tags for all the team members. So you can see all the items who's in charge and, and specifically which items or to-dos have been assigned to each team member. So it's a very nice way to use tags to um, see exactly who's working on what. So now let's move over to the spicy coconut flavor, which is under the labs column. I'll go ahead and expand this a bit. You can see we've got some, some items here. This is just a regular list. We've got some to-do items, and some of them have been completed. Uh, so the next step here is actually to set up taste trials, and Yuri is in charge of that. And I'll show you in a moment how we can actually make it a little bit easier for the team member, uh, in this case Yuri, to see that and to take care of that so they don't have to work from this uh, project board if they don't want to. 
Now let's just scroll down here to the versions. And as you can see, we actually have some images. You can add images and files to any part of your workflow document. So these are pictures of the different recipes that uh, the team has been testing uh, for this flavor. I'll go ahead and zoom back out and also collapse this for just a moment. Now we'll jump back to another project that we've got in process, which is remodeling the existing store. And again, this one also has some team members assigned. This is a slightly different layout. We're also using boards. This one is if you don't have a specific process or uh, the steps don't repeat, maybe you've got a bunch of different types of activities. This is a very basic layout that um, most Kanban boards use. So we've got a to-do column, a doing column, and a done column. And the idea is that the cards move from the left to the right as they're actually uh, completed. So let's zoom out for just a second. And we'll go home and we'll open up the daily section. And you can see that this is kind of like the teams to do. I only have my items here, but I would also like to have the rest of the team's uh, daily to do's. So what we can do is pull items from our projects into a daily to do, and that makes it much easier for everybody on the team to be aware of what everyone's working on for today. So the way that we do that is we can actually, first we'll click on daily. And you can see it's already been start. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again, just so you can see that. You do that from the main menu right here. And then once you star an item, uh, you'll actually see that they are in the left-hand sidebar. So we've got a section here called starred. If you expand that, you can see the items that have been starred. So in this case, this daily bullet. What that allows us to do is very quickly navigate to that section, but it also uh, gives us the added benefit that we can move items into it as well. So for example, on the, uh, the workflow document, we're going to navigate to our projects for just a second. And we'll open up develop new ice cream flavor. So we'll see that uh, spicy coconut is under the lab column, so we're already working on that. Expand it, we'll see what we have in the to-do list. So as I mentioned, Yuri has to set up some taste trials. So what we can do, uh, actually, to move that to the uh, daily list is basically, I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and then click and drag this item into the daily section, right? So as you saw, uh, this little circle turned into a diamond. So that means that we've created a bullet mirror. And a bullet mirror is basically like a live copy of any item. And that means that um, if I update one of the copies, the other copy is also going to be updated. That's basically all that means. So now we can actually close this here, jump back to the daily section, and here we go, set up taste trials. And again, it's a little diamond, so we know that it is a bullet mirror. And we can check out where the other bullets are by opening the bullet menu. You can see node has two mirrors. You can actually see where they are. So one is right here in our daily section. And another one is under a board, under a lab. So spicy coconut to do set up taste trials right there. Next, we'll go back to the other project that we had. So we'll jump to projects, remodel existing store, and we'll see that um, Sam actually has to review some interior plans. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna hold shift, and drag this item into daily. And I can jump to daily and we can see we've got these two items. So now we've got what everyone is working on today from one single uh, easy to access section. So as you can see, the mirror feature is pretty powerful. You can imagine using this for all kinds of things, um, not just projects. You could use this for meetings, for notes. Um, basically the idea is that you can take items or, or actually uh, note items in one section. Say uh, you've got a meetings bullet and you add meetings there with a uh, date uh, tags. And then once you've got actionable, so you've got to do things, that, items that people have to do that kind of come out from that meeting, you can then leave them in that meeting section and then mirror them into a, a daily or a board or, a, you know, a to do table, however you want to however you want to handle that. Um, so that means you can keep all your information together in one place. So our projects are always going to be right here. And they're always going to be up to date, right? So for example, if I uh, let's say that uh, Yuri actually takes care of this. We'll do this from the daily so you can see that. So Yuri does this, he completes that item. I'm just gonna go ahead and complete it. And then Sam completes the reviewing of the exterior plans. I can then go um, back to the uh, project section and you can see that those changes are gonna be reflected. So there we go, this has already been completed, set up taste trials. Um, and the same thing has happened for uh, remodeling the existing store, this step right here. So that's a very easy way to kind of manage different areas, uh, different projects from one single section. You could also use the same idea to create a dashboard where you can see um, changes to specific activities, uh, updates, all from one dashboard while leaving the original information uh, in their original location. So there we go. I hope that's been useful in giving you a couple of different ideas about how you can manage your projects, whether you're working by yourself or with a team inside of Workflowy. As you saw, the sharing permissions are pretty simple. Um, you can use boards or lists. 
You can use tags to very easily filter items, see what everyone's working on, and use date tags to figure out when things are due. So it's a very simple but very effective system.